What's up you guys? My name is Ashley. Welcome to my channel. This video here is going to be all about surgical positioning, draping, and prepping of a patient. So if you'd like to learn more about these three main categories, please continue watching and don't forget to subscribe and like my channel and don't and comment down below for any video requests you may have. So let's get to it. So, I want to talk about the four major prepping positions that we use in surgery. One is supine, two is prone, three is lithotomy, and four is lateral. There's other positionings that you'll find in your book or you'll learn along the way of doing your internships or in school. But I'm going to go over these four positions because they're the positions we see most often um, due to the types of cases that we, what we do. So first position is supine. And I'm going to post a picture here of what a supine position looks like. And the supine position, and I'm also going to post a, post a picture of the things you would need for a supine position to make your patient comfortable and make sure they're don't leave with any pressure points that were bothered during surgery. So for the supine position, patient is going to be laying face up to the ceiling on their back with either arm boards or no arm boards. Some doctors like their arms tucked in. And this position is mainly used for all your general cases. Um, any thoracic cases as well, depend depending on what type of thoracic case you're doing. But all of your general cases, lap coles, lap apes, open open laparotomies, hernia repairs, ENT cases. Um, when positioning your patient in the supine position, you're gonna um, for all positionings. And it's, especially if the surgery is going to be more than an hour or more than 30 minutes, you're going to want for your patient to have sequentials. And I'll post a picture here of what sequentials are. So basically, what they look like. Sequentials are these devices that help pump and circulate blood through the patient's legs so that they don't, there's no cause for clots just because they're laying there. Also, for supine position, we're going to want to put heel protectors on the heels of the patients because the heel of their feet are touching the bed <clears throat> excuse me because the heels of their feet are touching the bed and you don't want them to put any pressure there especially the case is more than an hour um also in the supine position if your patient's arms are going to be tucked in you always want to make sure your nurse is putting on our nerve protectors. And what that is, is a little egg cradle is what they call it. I'll post a picture here of what it looks like. And it's, you're going to put the on our nerve protector from their elbow. Because when it is tucked in, they're putting pressure on their elbow. We don't want it to be our fault that the patient had all these. Had whether they had pressure on their heels, pressure on their elbows you want everything to go smoothly and want to make sure you're protecting the patient at all times even when they're asleep and the next position we're going to talk about is prone position i will post a picture here of what prone position looks like and your my most basic description is face down and laying flat on your stomach and this position is used for pilodenosis, um, hemorrhoids sometimes, depending on the doctor, um, laminectomies for sure, discectomies for sure, and any type of mass that may be on a patient's back or any type of injection that they may do for on a patient on their back. Um, for this position, arm boards are usually set up front so the patient is laying with their arms as so like this or they're tucked in in a safety manner so that nothing is but again with the pressure you don't want pressure on their bones and their nerves and 
for this position, you always want to make sure you have extra pillows, like a lot of extra pillows, because you want to want to put pillows underneath the knees, because so, the knees will be touching the bed, and it's very bony there. You want to make sure that is protected, and you want to put a pillow underneath their calves so that their toes are not putting pressure on the bed either. And the next position I'm going to talk about is lateral position. Now this position is used, let's say, if for a lot of ortho cases it's used um, for INDs of some of an abscess on the buttocks or you know if a wound is or what the area of the body that we're going to work on is hard to get to. Um, usually for lateral the device we use is something called a a bean bag and the bean bag what it does and I'll post the picture here what a bean bag looks like what it does is you lay the patient on it you adjust them on how you want it and you you make sure your your patient positioned exactly how you want it and we connect the suction to a tip to suck out all the air and just compress it so it's around the patient and it will keep the patient in the same position that we left them in without any movement so the tech doesn't have to hold the patient while doing the case and it's much safer than to be worried whether the patient's going to roll over or not because they're not really positioned correctly with just blankets and for that for lateral position you want the patient you want to put a pillow in between the patient's two arms because their arms are going to be like this to the side you want to put a pillow right here so that their arms are not touching each other putting pressure on each other and the last and final position that I'm going to talk about is lithotomy position and I, I will post a picture here to just show you what lithotomy position looks like and I'll post another picture of the devices we use for lithotomy so all hospitals will use different type of devices there's Allen stirrups candy canes um, and just regular and yellow fins that's the, yellow elephants and these are like boot looking you'll see attachments that go onto the bed and lithotomy position is basically the patients on their back and legs are opened and separated if you're a lady you would have been in this position before at a gynecologist's office when they put your legs in stirrups and you're opened up um, we use this position mainly for GYN procedures, but we can we also use it for um, some laparoscopic procedures that include the rectum and manipulation of the rectum. And with this position, you just always want to make sure there's not pressure being put behind the patient's knees. And you always want to make sure the yellow fins are at the exact same number so that the, position, the patient is positioned correctly and not one leg is higher than the other because when they wake up from surgery, they're going to be pretty sore. And you also want to make sure that the patient is closer to the lower part of the bed so that when the doctor is doing an exam in there, he's able to put a retractor and the retractor is not being, is not being bothered by the rest of the bed they need to be kind of hanging off not really hanging off but just a tad bit so that retractors can fit into their vaginal area properly or so that the doctor can have better access point into the anus or the rectum and those are the four positions that we mostly see in surgery i'm pretty sure you go to bigger hospitals you see a lot more but I'm just going over the basic positions you may have to know about. Now, when it comes to prepping the patient, as in, you know, necessarily prepping them for surgery, um, we have three different types of preps that we use in our cases. Um, we have betadine, which is what we use mainly for vaginal cases. You do not want to use dura prep or chloro prep for vaginal cases. We also have dura prep, which usually takes like about three minutes to dry, and chloro prep, which you don't really have to you wait like another two minutes to dry for that one. Um, we mainly use dura prep and betadine. And after you finish using betadine on a patient, you always want to make sure you wash off the betadine because the betadine 
it makes the patient itch really bad and you don't want this to be uncomfortable after the surgery of the sins that are already in pain. Um, when it comes to prepping for a patient, it all depends on the area of the, the surgery where it's going to be. Make a drawing here to show you prepping of a patient. And don't laugh at my drawing. You want to make sure your nurse is prepping from the mid chest area to the mid thigh and all along these sides here when doing any type of open case just all the way down to the mid thigh um when doing when doing or let's say you're doing an orthopedic case with the legs the knee you want your you want your nurse or yourself whoever preps at the hospital to prep from the foot which I didn't draw feet here, but you want to prep from the foot all the way up to the thigh, to the, the high thigh, all around it. Now, when it comes to nasal cases, not all doctors require prep for nasal cases, but the doctors that we do work for do. And for that, it's just all along the nose area and along the eyes here. Now we're doing vaginal cases. Um, they're going to prep all inside. I know. I know. They're going to prep inside and all along the thighs from here to here and all of this. Now when they're doing laparoscopic gyne gynecological cases, they're going to prep all down here, down below, up to mid-chest area. And you never know if they're going to have to open. Um, C-sections, the same. It would, it would be more from the belly line, from where the belly starts, on a pregnant patient. So from here, let's draw like a belly for a pregnant patient. From here to about here. And you want to make sure all surfaces are covered and everything has been properly prepped. Now, when it comes to draping of a patient for these cases, doctors always use four towels to square off. Um, if if a doctor wants you to prep to drape, that's perfectly fine. Just know where your incision sites are going to be. Know your doctor and where they're going to where they're going to stand and what area of the body you're working on and what you're removing or what you're looking for. And I also had so those that's all you need to know about prepping. 101 like the basics of prepping there's not much you need to know because for the most part as a tech you will learn how a doctor wants you to drape and how they want you to prep as, as you start to work with them um somebody asked about inserting foley's yes i have inserted a foley um under nurse's supervision because it was already sterile it was, and most most for the most part techs do not have to do that and if you do have to, you do come across a patient that you end up that you do have to insert fully it is very simple for a male you're just gonna stick it down the urethra until you hit um, until you start seeing urine come out for a female you're gonna find her urethra, her urethra and you're gonna stick it in there. Make sure it's always lubed up. Stick it in there until urine starts coming out. And that's all I have for you. If you'd like to see more videos on surgical tech things, um, have questions about becoming a surgical tech, please feel free to leave comments down below or message me on Instagram. I will always answer your questions. And please be sure to leave comments down below on what other types of surgical tech videos you'd like to see. I try to upload as much as possible. I'm trying to be better at it. It's just really difficult right now because of work, but I promise you we'll get these videos up. Thank you for watching. I really hope you enjoyed it and I hope you were able to take some information away from this. Please don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe to my channel and follow me on Instagram at Glam Tech. Bye.